All right, so the RNG device it is. Um, yeah, voted for it, and here you go. Uh, I have a couple things which you should know about the RNG device, and also things that you can do with the RNG device, and let's get right into it. Okay, so before we start in, I want to give a quick overview of what the RNG device is. It is a random number generator device, uh, which basically means you can create random stuff in Fortnite Creative. Um, this thing is really cool and you can have a lot more options than just randomizing stuff. Uh, but for beginners, there is a zone in here, which actually is not displayed on default. Uh, you have to go to zone here and then go to forward, back, forward or whatever you want to have. And then you basically can put in different stuff in here and then have it randomized while you jump on the little thing here. You can see it's kind of like choosing whatever you, know, you want to have. And that is basically the basics about the RNG device. So let's go right into it. Okay, so starting off, I have one of the more requested ones and it is having random loadouts or random loot or whatever. Uh, and it is very simple to build. All you need is your RNG device. Okay, so let's start off with the settings from the RNG device. So um, you want to have the uh, value limit of one. Uh, that's basically the, the default and you can leave that actually. Uh, the second value is and how many uh, things you want to randomize. So I have three in this example, so you can put that whatever you want. The winning value, put that to zero. Uh, and then you can go here and put the uh, roll time to whatever you want. I put it on instant. That means that it's basically going to have an instant uh, output. Uh, the zone to backwards or whatever. Uh, you can put that, that is obviously all on you and then have some device that activates the RNG device, which is this uh, button in this case. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to put in triggers in here. Uh, triggers work the best with this. Um, you can also put a lot of stuff. We come to that later, but obviously triggers are one of the most useful uh, devices in the game. So you can put them in here. So uh, we have three triggers here and these are each connected to the um, to the item grinders here with the guns. So you put a uh, grand item when we're seeing from channel one, and then you put a channel uh, a trigger device, which also has a channel one. And then you repeat that over and over again. And that's basically all you have to do. You can obviously also have this from, you know, game start enabled, but I use a button for the purpose of showing this. So we can try it out if it actually works. And we can see this, uh, you know, this tie got activated. We got a scar. If we press again, we get another gun and so on and so on. So you can see it working super fine. Uh, it is super easy to build um, and uh, there's nothing hard. You can see, you can obviously do that with uh, classes as well, but I'm pretty sure now that you know how the RNG device works, you can figure that out yourself. It is just putting in uh, trigger devices, connecting them to whatever you want to have randomized and then it's uh, very easy to create that. Okay, so the next one is uh, one that is a little bit more advanced, not super advanced or something, but it uses a couple more devices. And this is the one like, um, you saw that in kid shows back in the days where you have to kind of jump on these little tiles or whatever, and then one tile got randomly selected and we're going to recreate that. So uh, you can see here, if I press the button, um, one of these two is going to light up and it's this one. And you can also see that I'm currently in team one. So if I would stand in here, you can see that I get selected to team three. If I go on the, the one now, um, you can see nothing is going to happen. So if I try this again, uh, now you can see that we got team one. So if I go in here now, you can see that I got selected to team two. And if I jump on this one, nothing happened. And before that, we obviously got selected to team three. So let's see how we build this. Okay, so starting off with the random number generator, we have the uh, the same setup basically as in this one. So you have uh, your, t your value, you can see here, I have two now instead of three. Uh, at the zone, it's whatever, it just something activates. It's basically the same one as over there. Okay, so the next one is we have two trigger devices here and these are linked up to the mutator zones here. You can see that if we go in here, um, we have uh, this mutator zone, first of all, enabled on GameStop to know, this is very important. And uh, that enable on four and this one is enable on five. They also kind of revert each other. So if uh, this one gets activated, this one gets disabled. You get the point, right? We also have some lights under here, which are for the visual representation. <laughs> visual representation and you can see in here that uh, they have basically the same channels uh, as in the mutator zone so they're just for the visual stuff uh, nothing too special about that you can you know even leave that out it doesn't matter um, one thing which is very important is that you now go into the mutator zones and at different channels so on player entering uh, channel 11 and on this one I think it's channel 10 yeah, yeah. So what that will do is basically they're both uh, disabled from the start. Uh, and as soon as the number generator chooses one of these, they get enabled. And if you then stand in here, you send a signal to the uh, class selector over here, 
which can be used to uh, you know select teams or make a team selection. And you can see that I want this class selector to make a team for team two or whatever. And then uh, time to switch on instant, you can basically whatever you want to have here. And then you have to put in a channel from the imitator zone. <laughs> and it also sounds a little bit complicated at first, but if you get the hang of it, it is super easy and um, it is not hard at all. So um, I would definitely leave the map with the full on description of the stuff in the description. So you can you know kind of revisit it. Um, but other than that, it is super easy to create and you can see that the RNG device is really, really cool for creating stuff like this. Obviously you can do this in a different way. You don't have to use the RNG device, uh, but I think this is a cool way on how to make it unique and different. Okay, so the next one is something more knowledge. Knowledge. Wise, uh, and I really want to show you that the music sequencer cannot only activate triggers, it can also activate music sequencer and other sequence uh, and other RNG devices as well, which is kind of super helpful for stuff if you want to have randomized like uh, music or whatever, or if you want to have randomized other patterns like where you need the music sequencer to do stuff, because obviously the music sequencer is still quite unique to the RNG device. So you can see if I jump on here, one of the two will be selected. Um, what do we do the RNG device now? And you can see it's choosing a new uh, random pattern. And if I jump in here again, hopefully we get the music sequencer. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, now you can also see that the music sequencer also gets activated by the, the tile of the RNG device. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You can create some really cool sequences with that. Uh, I use this a lot for, the, uh, for a lot of my reaction time uh, aiming maps, uh, where I had random patterns that you know have to show up then. Uh, so that is super nice to use that and let's move on to the next one. One thing which is also quite unique and quite interesting is that the music sequencer can actually also activate uh, the speakers, uh, which basically you don't have to change anything but uh, the, the sound of the speakers. And you can see if we start the game and you can see if we now jump on the uh, RNG device, you can see that the metal one got selected and you get the little sound. So you can have that for randomized sounds. Um, which is also quite interesting to know because uh, obviously that is nowhere displayed that the music sequencer is going to activate the speakers. So I think that's a very cool thing to know. Obviously one thing to note is that you don't have to use the zone from the RNG device. You can also do it all inside of here. Uh, it just works differently. Uh, but one thing which I really want to show you guys is that you can actually use the RNG device to create like a two kind of two channel output. So you can see here uh, that we have two uh, objectives here. And both of them are on different channels, uh, right? They turn on different channels. So this one is channel seven and this one is channel, I think six or something. Yeah. So they both turn on on different channels. And what we can do in the RNG device is put these settings in here. We put the value limit to, to one, the winning value to one as well, then put it to instant. Uh, we don't need the a zone here, so it doesn't matter. And then what we want to do is we want to have the on win transmit on to channel six and the when road max on channel seven. So what you can see here that uh, we have a one-to-one -one value or whatever. So obviously that means that one is always gonna win. So we can put that in here. So one will always be activated. And we can also see that one is the highest because we only have one. Um, so you can also put that in here. So we can have two different channels activated by one channel. So that can be useful for quite some stuff like very advanced stuff, but you know, it's good to know. For some reason, the when road min doesn't work because technically one is also the minimum here, but I don't know why it doesn't work. So it only works with these two or I guess the other way around. Um, so you can see uh, if we now start the game. So keep remembering that we obviously had different channels on these two. And if we now start this, you can see that both turn on, even though we had completely different channels on them. And you can see by just using the RNG device in the middle, uh, we kind of can split it into two different signals, which is super nice. Okay, so so for the last one, I have one of the good to know category, I would say, and that is uh, that the RNG device can actually activate you to portals, uh, which the sequencer cannot. So you can see here, if we start the game, so you can see that if we go on the RNG device, uh, we are going to get teleported. Uh, you can see that it's working obviously by this trigger. So if I jump on here, I will still get teleported. And you can see this one is the same trigger over here. It has the same number. So if I jump on here, I get teleported as well. But if I activate the music sequencer, it doesn't work. So you can see here, if I jump on here, it's not going to happen. You saw it was activated, but I still didn't get teleported. So if you want to create stuff where you want to randomly have people teleported or just want to have people teleported in some kind of sequence, you would use the RNG device and not the music sequencer because the music sequencer cannot do that. So I think that is a pretty good list to end it here. And, um, and uh, I hope to see you guys in my next video and let me know what you want to see next. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter uh, if you made it this far in the video. Um, 
leave a like and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys. Bye.